It's time to talk about humans and all the things that we can do. Now we're going to talk about humans, well, specifically human adaptations. First, let's remind ourselves what an adaptation is. So think all the way back to the beginning of evolution, um, especially when Darwin was defining some of these really important terms. An adaptation is any successful feature that helps a species survive. Um, it's the result of multiple generations of natural selection. Um, we can see here we have an example going back to Darwin's finches. Remember, we had many different species with different shaped beaks um, because each species had different adaptations because they fed on different food. We can apply similar concepts to any other organism, including humans. And we, of course, have many different features that help us survive. Um, so what we're going to talk about here, we're going to start talking about the human niche or the environment that we're adapted to. Then we'll talk about how we adapt to new environments, because you might have noticed that humans are kind of everywhere. Um, then we'll talk about some body type variations we see in humans. We'll talk about a specific adaptation some populations have to hypoxic conditions. And lastly, we'll talk about skin color and why we have so many different skin colors for humans. But let's start here. What is the human niche? Um, now we are within the realm of ecology. Ecology is a type of biology where we're looking at the relationship between an organism and its environment. This is a really interesting field of study. And you might have noticed that humans are all over the planet. So these are just a few of the different environments you can find humans living in. So some people live in you know, these temperate forest re regions or grasslands, um, really cold tundra regions, um, or like high altitude up in the mountains. And also some people people even live in the rainforest. If I had to choose, I'd probably choose the rainforest. It's the most pretty. Um, but what we're really talking about here is the idea of a niche. A niche is the specific environment and ecological role a species is adapted to. There's many different ways you can define this. So, you know, flounders, um, you know, they live on the bottom of the ocean. Um, so, you know, their niche is, you know, bottom feeders on the ocean floor. So we can define it that's, um, that specifically, but we also can talk about it in slightly more general terms. And here's where we have these words, generalist versus specialist. Thankfully, <laughs> the uh, colloquial definitions for these words is pretty much how we use it um, in biology as well with a little bit more of a specific definition. A generalist species is something that uses a variety of resources, so that means it eats a bunch of different things, but it can also inhabit a variety of environments, so you can find it in a lot of different places. A specialist, however, they have a very limited diet. They might only eat one specific thing, and they also have a pretty narrow environmental tolerance, so maybe they can only be in really hot or really cold places. Um, so you might you might think that's a pretty narrow possibility and that maybe we, we're not gonna find that many specialists because of that. But one thing we do find in specialist species is they tend to be adapted to something extreme. So maybe the environment is extreme or maybe the type of food they specialize is extreme. Um, let's look at an example to help us understand this better. So we're going to compare two different primate species. We have a macaque and then a bamboo lemur. So first, just looking at the range of where they inhabit, um, this map here, I actually have two different species of macaques on here. Um, well, the different species of macaques are tend to be pretty similar to each other. But you can see these two different species of macaques are in a pretty wide range. Um, so Macaca mulata is just over a lot of different places in mainland Southeast Asia. And then Macaca fascicularis is in a lot of different places um, in the islands of Southeast Asia. Whereas our bamboo lemur, it's only in a couple different places in Madagascar. So already we have a pretty big difference between our macaques and our bamboo lemur. Um, you might guess the macaque here, it's our generalist and our bamboo lemur is our specialist. Um, macaques, they are really smart and they eat whatever, and they're actually regarded as pests in a lot of places because sometimes they will actually raid human crops. Um, yeah, they're, they're kind of too smart for their own good and for, for our prefer preference as well. Uh, bamboo lemurs, on the other hand, they the bamboo they eat is full of cyanide. That is poisonous if you, were, if you did not remember the Princess Bride. 
So the benefit here is there's like no competition for their food. So even though they have this really narrow tolerance and they only eat a specific thing, because they chose to specialize on something that's hard for other species to eat, there's pretty much no competition. So these are just two different strategies with how they uh, you know, succeed and survive. So when you think about humans, are humans generalists or specialists? So here's a map of where you can find humans. Um, the darker red is where you can find more people. The lighter red is where you can find fewer people. And the gray is when there's just hardly anybody, if at all. Um, so you can see humans tend to avoid the northernmost parts of Russia and Canada. Also, um, we tend to avoid the middle of deserts. So you can see um, we tend to avoid the Sahara Desert and the um, middle part of Australia there. Um, keep in mind, however, this is a very simplified population density map because we only have three colors represented here. So I advise you, if you're uh, particularly curious of that, this to look at a more detailed map here. But you might notice that humans are everywhere. So just looking at that, humans, we would consider them generalists because we are in a variety of different places. However, there are a couple of unusual things we see in the distribution of humans that we don't see in most other species. Um, so some of these environments here, particularly the very cold regions and the very high altitude regions, these are environments that tend to be associated with specialist species because they are extreme environments. And a paper came out a couple years ago in 2018 where they actually defined an entirely new, new niche. We have a term that's just for us. We are generalist specialists, according to uh, Roberts and Stewart here. So let's look at a quote from what they said. Expansions of Homo sapiens beyond Africa may have also involved often specialized adaptations to a diversity of extreme environments, little used or wholly uninhabited by other members of the hominin clade, including deserts, high plateau and mountain systems, the Paleoarctic and tropical rainforests. So what is really cool about humans is that yes, we are everywhere and it but some of the environments which we've expanded into are extreme environments. So this is one way in which we differ from other um, hominin species. Um, hominin in this instance means everything that is more closely related to us than it is to chimpanzees. Um, but of course that means we also differ from other primate species as well. Um, so let's look at some of these different environments that they're calling extreme here. Um, so one, one extreme is very high altitude and or cold. Uh, cold, you know, we deal with <laughs> using clothes as I'm using my scarf here. Um, we also rainforests. Um, rainforests may not be extreme for other species because there's obviously a lot of different things that live in a rainforest, but it does tend to be fairly difficult for humans to survive in. Um, also deserts, pretty darn extreme. Um, humans are super sweaty creatures, so it is relatively <laughs> difficult for humans to survive there. Um, we do need to have um, access to uh, relatively uh, easy access to water. Um, so we can look at some of these different environments here. We have, here's a desert in India, um, some of the highlands of Lesotho, um, the Russian steppe, and then a tropical rainforest in Sri Lanka. And these are all different places that people inhabit today. Um, so to help us understand what's so different and special about us, we can use these diagrams to help understand. Um, so here are, Panda is our example of our specialist species. Those populations, they're always eating exactly the same thing. Our generalist, of course, our raccoon, different populations actually switch pretty often and they're always eating different things because they're just, you know, trying to survive with whatever's there. Human populations, on the other hand, now we have three different populations here depicted in purple and each population is doing a different thing. So here, overall, humans are generalists. As a species, um, we're doing so many different things, living in different places, but each individual population of humans um, does tend to be relatively consistent in their way of life. Um, so the authors here are just 
uh, defining a generalist specialist as the specialization of individual populations. And this is primarily done through cultural adaptation. So we have tools and clothing. Um, we use the environment in very intentional ways, and that allows us to survive in many different environments. There are a few biological adaptations, but, uh, mostly allometry or different body proportions, um, and then a few different um, adaptations to respiration, specifically for high altitude. But overall, the uh, we are seeing more cultural adaptations than biological adaptations to these different situations. When we're looking at modern humans as a whole, we find us in a huge range of, of habitats, but relatively low genetic diversity. So we are really seeing this, these adaptations to different places happening through this cultural adaptation rather than biological adaptation. And that's just one of the ways that humans are pretty cool. So can you explain? What is the human niche? And how are we different from closely related primate species? <music>